Is YouTube still a thing? I haven't seen YouTube in so long. What's up guys? It's Kayla. And Jim. Welcome back to another Meteorology Monday. Surprise, we're back. <laughs> it's been so crazy work-wise. It's been so crazy. And then you add on top puppies. And then you add puppies on top of it. Yes. <laughs> May even throw in a little puppy footage. Maybe. Oh, of course. Maybe. Of course. Might throw some in there. But you know, it, between work, schedules, puppies, things that were already planned. It's just, it's been a minute since we posted. So we want to just let you guys know yeah, we haven't forgotten about you. YouTube is still a thing, I think. I haven't seen anything in a while. Um, but we are trying our best to adhere to our schedule of meteorology Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And it's just one week slips by and another week slips by. So we're trying our best, guys. And we really yeah. appreciate you sticking it out with us. We didn't quit YouTube. <laughs> Some of you may have been wondering. We didn't quit. <laughs> we're trying. We just had a month. It's It's been crazy. It's been crazy. Hopefully, in the next couple of weeks, we'll be able to get back on a regular schedule. We'll just have to see. But as for now... As for now... We are going to record another video. Let's talk about some weather. So what are we going to talk about today? Today, uh, we are kind of following up on a video that we did... Three, four, five months... A while six, back. Uh, yeah. Last... Mm, an indeterminate time ago. <laughs> So we are talking about the Farmer's Almanac winter prediction. Now that it is no longer winter, let's go back and look at what they had to say about this past winter. Then let's look at what actually happened and see if they were right, if they were wrong, if they were like a reputable source kind of thing. See what you guys experienced in your area specifically compared to what we're about to talk about. And it's gonna be a little bit of reading, so grab some coffee and let's just uh, dive right into it. Now, one thing we do need to know is the Farmer's Almanac breaks down the United States into 18 different regions. Mm -hmm. So they forecast based on a region, but the verification is based on a city within the region. So we're gonna get to that, but before we get started. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe down below if you haven't already. If you didn't see the last video that we posted, we have passed 5,000 subscribers, which is such a huge milestone for us. And we are on our way to 10,000 and 10 million and, and 10 billion. So <laughs> if you like what you're seeing along the way and you enjoy our videos, please consider hitting the subscribe button. It helps us out a lot. And we'd love to have you as part of the Videotech Weather family. Now we can dive into it. Now we can dive in. Let's, let's dive in. Some predictions from their winter forecast include an active storm track dominating in the eastern half of the country, running from the western Gulf of Mexico to the northeast, across the Virginias, and across interior New York State and New England. Mid-January, bouts of heavy rain and snow across the eastern two-thirds of the country, followed by what might be one of the coldest outbreaks of Arctic air we have seen in several years. How cold? Try 40 degrees below zero. A cold December and a very cold January in the Northeast. But February will bring milder temperatures that should make winter seem more bearable. South of the storm track, much of the Southeast US, we'll see frequent storms bringing cold rains and a wintry mix of wet snow, sleet, ice, and freezing rain, as well as chilly temperatures during the month of January. February will likewise warm the region to near normal winter season temperatures overall. For the Mid-Atlantic, Ohio Valley, and Great Lakes region, the I-95 corridor can be included in this winter mix zone, with places to the north of the track seeing the precipitation fall more as snow, and at times a lot of it. This may be especially true over the Ohio Valley and Great Lakes area. Winter will feel unreasonably cold for readers in the Great Lakes region, especially in January. The north central states will see a fair share of storminess, which means plenty of snow. Early January, we see good potential for heavy snow that may reach as far south as Texas and Oklahoma, followed by a sweep of bitterly cold air. 
The south central states are forecast to see some accumulating snow, especially in early January. The southern plains temperatures will average chillier than normal. The far west and the Pacific Northwest will see about normal winter precipitation. However, the southwest will experience less than normal. The Pacific Northwest will see brisk, cool conditions, and the southwest will be the mild area of the country with near normal winter temperatures. So that was their prediction for winter 2022-2023 over the continental U.S. So let's see how they did based on their forecast verification. Our overall accuracy rate in forecasting the direction of precipitation departure for a representative city in each region was 94.4%, as we were correct in 17 of the 18 regions. Humble brag on their <clears> part. <throat> in region 14, the desert southwest, we forecasted near normal precipitation, and the winter ended up being below normal. Even though we're tempted to take half credit, we'll chalk this up as a miss given the widespread below normal precipitation throughout the region. Looking at temperatures, our forecasted departures from normal were largely correct from the high plains to the west coast. We were also correct in New England, but other areas near the east coast ended up warmer than we expected. Overall, our accuracy rate in forecasting the direction of temperature departure for a representative city in each region was only about 50%. This makes our total accuracy rate 72.2% slightly below our traditional average rate of 80%. So kids, if you're watching this, if you get a 72.2 on your test, you can just use the Farmer's Almanac wording and just go to your parents and say, it's just slightly below my average of 80%. Our forecast for near to below normal snowfall across New England and portions of the Atlantic Corridor was correct in most areas, as was our forecast for near normal snowfall across the Southeast. Our above normal snowfall forecast in parts of the deep south, in places like Nashville and Little Rock, was also correct. Our forecast of near to above normal snowfall in the lower lakes was largely correct, while much of the Ohio Valley saw less snow than we expected. Snowfall also underperformed our forecast across the high plains, while our Intermountain West forecast of below normal snowfall turned out to be largely correct. Much of Alaska, especially in northern and eastern areas, saw above normal snowfall, which matched our forecast. So it seems like a very humble brag on their part that they were largely correct in all this uh, for precipitation and then 50-50 on temperatures. But again, they are only looking at one specific city within a region. So maybe, maybe the numbers are a little bit inflated or maybe they're uh, a little bit underestimated. So is it the best way to Verify your forecast? That's right. It's a, it's a question we have to ask ourselves when we're looking over these results. So one thing I want to take a look at is when we look at the regional map, editing Caleb's going to pop up the, the regions here. Let's take a look at the Intermountain West, which would be region 13. That is a huge area. So when we look at the Intermountain region, the city that they chose as a representation, they chose Spokane, Washington. Is that the most accurate reflection for that region? Maybe their research shows that that is an accurate reflection. What would be interesting is do their regions change over time, let's say, right. You know, every decade they, they tweak the region. Do they select the same city every year as the representation? for the previous three month forecast, it's gonna be interesting. If we look at uh, when summer comes and we look at what their spring forecast was, will it match up with these right. same cities? And let's take a look at another one. Let's say region number four. So you got from southern, very southeast part of uh, Virginia all the way down into the Georgia Florida border so they picked Atlanta Georgia they picked Atlanta <laughs> Georgia and so. part of Virginia as well uh, as the coastal Carolinas <laughs> and that's it's, it's an interesting you know that's you got to kind of look at how they yeah. got the data but we don't know why they did it this way yeah so Atlanta is not anywhere near the coast and this is representing the coastlines as well so not sure if that's just the city that kind of evens out, but it's strange that they wouldn't choose like straight in the middle or more like to the east or the west or how they come up with these cities. It'd be very interesting to find that out. 
So we have some questions about how did they pick the cities? How did they draw the regions? How did they best determine that this was the way to do their verification? With that said, what do you guys think about their verification process by using a single city as a representation for the entire region? Not only that, let's talk about what your experiences were because I'm thinking that a majority of you do not live in these 18 representative cities. Yeah. And I'd be curious to see, okay, in region four, where there's the Carolinas, for someone that lives in, let's say, Wilmington, North Carolina, their assessment based on Atlanta, Georgia, did it apply to Wilmington, North Carolina? Same thing for region 13, was Spokane, Washington, representative of let's say Boise, Idaho, or let's say Salt Lake City, Utah. So let's speak to region four as two who are living north of Charlotte, North Carolina, and having Atlanta be our representative city over here. It says that we were supposed to get frequent storms, cold rains, wintry mixes, freezing rains, snow, as well as cold temperatures in January, and then warmer temperatures in February. If I'm recalling correctly, it didn't storm very often. We definitely didn't get any snow, much to my disappointment. And I think every month got colder. So January was probably the warmest, and then February was freezing, and then March was even colder than that. And then I think we still had a freeze warning like two weeks ago, and yeah. it's May, so. I think it almost snowed in March that one yeah. time. We had, uh, it was so cold. Yes. That we might have seen a flake, and that was about it. Yes, so. and it was like snowing in the mountains. Now I know this is getting into spring, not technically yeah. winter, but their trend of a really cold January getting warmer and warmer was kind of backwards. It was kind of a warmer January and it got colder and colder and colder. Yeah. Well, I think we did have a cold spell for January, but when you took the monthly average right. temperature, February was colder overall. Yeah, yeah. and I don't yeah. think it lined up 100% for our specific area. Yeah, but I don't know if you average out all those numbers, it might come kind of similar, but um, if you're comparing it to Atlanta, Georgia, I think if you took Charlotte as the city, you definitely would have been more in the wrong than the right. But if you live in a different area in Region 4, what was your experience? So there you have the Farmer's Almanac 2022 to 2023 Winter Prediction Verification Analysis Discussion. There you go. <laughs> Again, if you like what you saw, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Helps us out a lot. Again, subscribe if you're not. And if you haven't checked out our winter prediction video that this is kind of the follow-up to, before you watch this one, I will have it pop up in the corner here to go check that out. And as always, follow us on social media, Facebook and Instagram popping up here, as well as checking out our School of Weather, our website, and all the fun things that we leave down in the description box. While you're down there, again, make sure to leave us a comment. What region are you from? What did you think of the Farmer's Almanac? Do you prefer something like Noah over the Farmer's Almanac? Or are you one of those ones who just loves to see, you know, pigs picking up sticks and that's going to be how your winter is? Which we're told that actually happens in some areas, which is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Let us know down in the comments. We love talking with you guys. And until next time, I'm Kayla. And I'm Jim. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you at the next Meteorology Monday. <laughs> that was terrible. That Do it again. the best. <laughs> Until next time, I'm Kayla. And I'm Jim. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you at the next Meteorology Monday. Get it. There she is again. <laughs> give me a ball. Give me, give me, give me. Big loop.